What's up, YouTube? Tix here, bringing you guys the PvP guide. Now, I'm not going to go crazy with this guide. I just wanted to make it short and sweet for you guys and fill as much information as uh, fast as possible. I will be leaving some stuff out, but most of the stuff that I'm leaving out isn't really going to be too much of an advantage in PvP situations. Um, most of the stuff I've included in the video are going to be like diverse for every single map. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, I would really appreciate if you could smash the like button, subscribe, turn on notifications, and come check me out on twitch.tv slash tixb. Uh, we stream every day. But yeah, have a good one and enjoy the video. So the importance of right side peaks versus left side peaks. As you can see right here, these raiders are right in front of me. And what are they doing? They're not shooting me. You're going to ask how, how am I doing this? Uh, this is with the alt D feature. They're not shooting back. Um, how that works is because of the right side peak and the way the body's positioned, it's in front of the door. So they're not able to shoot back. Now, for example, let's go into a left side peak and show you how bad left side peaks are. So the raider just aggroed me. Let me get out of range. Reset it real quick. I'm going to come into a left side peak like so. Instantly, the raiders aggroed on, on me. Uh, that is the importance of left side and right side peaks. Just to give you an example, uh, as you guys know, the body the body's position uh, peaks more on the left side uh, as you peak stuff. So it gives you a huge disadvantage in PvP and also PvE if you're fighting raiders. Say there's a guy holding the angle down there. You're on this tight heady like so. Your body is covered behind the wall. It's going to be so hard for him to shoot back at you and hit you because your body is like literally in cover and you've got like this nasty little peak. So now moving on to uh, off angles and peeking and also recoil reduction on guns. So let's say we've got a player holding this uh, head box right here like so. We're forced instantly into a left side peak, which is a huge disadvantage for us as this guy will easily see us before we can see him and kill us. So you have two tips. You can throw a grenade like so, right? Get him out of the angle. Wait for the nade to explode. Move over to the wall like so and get the off angle. This player is going to peek this, right? He's going to come out peeking this. Looking right here because that's the most, you know, that's the most obvious spot that someone's going to peek from. But because you're on the off angle and the grenade masks the sound of your footsteps, he's not going to know you're on the off angle. So this is where doing these uh, little tricks like so will help you out a ton in PvP to catch people off guard. Now, moving on to guns and recoil. Okay, I'm going to give you a full example of the recoil without me controlling it while standing up. Watch. As you can see, there's an initial kick and then there's a lot of spread elsewhere around this area. Bullet starts here and then kicks up to there. So, what do you want to do in PvP situations? I highly recommend that you crouch. Uh, if you didn't know, crouching actually reduces the recoil pretty significantly. I'm going to show you that without me controlling it. As you can see, the spread is so much tighter. The recoil doesn't jump as much. As you can see, it's almost half of what it was standing up, which is huge. So I highly recommend you do this in PvP as this will help you out and also make it easier to kill targets. So how to correctly peek? I'm going to try and keep this as quick as possible. So let's say we've got a guy inside Violet, right? There's a guy in Violet. He's holding the angle. He's using the Alt-D feature to lean perfectly like so. He's got his body covered behind the wall. He's on a nasty heady. It's going to be really hard for you to shoot him. So how do you peek this correctly? You're going to ask. So, the typical player would walk up to this door like this, open it, the guy in violet would beam, pre far after the door opens and kill you, right? You're not going to be able to react on that, it's, it's, too, much, uh, it's too much time. So, the correct way you, you should peek this is by using the free look feature, which is a great feature by the way. I highly recommend you learn how to use this. This is a huge tool for information and it can save your life a lot. So, you know there's a guy in violet, you open the door, run across like so. You get the information on him. Obviously, if you if you keep distance, it's going to make it harder for him to hit you. So I highly recommend you do that. Once you've got the information, you can do two things. You can run across like this, get on the right side peak and do that, which is the Alt E feature. It's a very fast peak. It's one of the fastest peaks in the game. Unfortunately, with the way the servers work, sometimes people won't see you doing this. So you can kill them super fast before they even see you. Or you can do this instead. Little jiggle peek with a quick shot. This is very, very good. It's really hard for the player on the other side to see you and shoot back. Or you can just do the standard block. You know, uh, the choice is yours. But always make sure you're on the right side peak as right side peak advantage is huge in this game. Therefore, we're trying to do that from the left hand side. As you can see, our body is more exposed to the player. So before we even get a chance to see him, he's going to see our, our legs peeking, as you can see. So we before we even see him, look, he can see our legs, right? So it's easier for him to pre far and get the shots up. That's the importance of right side peeking in this game and left side peeking. So, 
Thing to note, right side peak only, never left side peak. Eventually, BSG is going to add shoulder swap in, which is going to be nice for left side peaks. Now, you have another choice if you don't want to do the run across, as a good player is going to read your movements like this. He's going to read it and start pre firing. Um, you can do this instead. You can go backwards and forward once and sprint jump. Sprint jumping allows you to be very fast and also get the same information uh, uh, with very few risks. Um, it's going to be a lot harder for the guy inside to shoot you in the head when you're doing this, which is huge. And then you can start mixing it up if obviously if you don't have that information already but by that time you should have that information that's how to peek correctly there's different ways like i said you've got alt e you got jiggle peeking and you've got full-blown wide swinging with a lean uh the choice is yours now another thing i will teach you as well um i don't do this too much anymore let's say there's a guy holding this angle and you haven't got space to run across like this and get the uh information you can do you can do this jiggle peeking uh, there is a there is a fast way to do it right now as you can see this is the fastest way to jiggle peek it, You have to learn it. I used to be very good at jiggle peeking But I don't really do it anymore because the meta's changed in Tarkov But basically how it works is you use the lean feature While also strafing with A and D and it is very hard for the player to shoot back at you uh, On his screen. He'll just see your head peeking out very very strong feature You can't do this on a left side peek unfortunately, but this is also another great way to get information Okay, so let's put ourselves in a situation, right? We've got a guy right here. Uh, he's in a weird angle. I can't get the headshot I'm in. I can only shoot him in the thorax. What do I do in this situation? So, if you hold C and then scroll wheel downwards, you can actually adjust the position of your character's um, posi like you know posture uh, from standing up. And you can also go back down to crouch. This will allow you to line up these nice little crack shots which can be super advantageous in certain situations. As you can see now, I'm at a good angle to hit those headshots. I can also go up and get more of a downwards look, which is really, really nice. So the trick to doing that is hold C and scroll wheel. Useful tool, make sure you take advantage of this in PvP. Now, another thing on your guns, make sure you start using lasers. Now, you can use the infrared laser, which is this one. Uh, it doesn't actually give away your position and it does give you hip fire accuracy, like so. But hipfire actually got nerfed uh, this wipe silently um, as you can see it's not as consistent as it used to be anymore um, it's, it stra strays a lot so i recommend you using like a red laser or a green laser so you can actually see your bullets um, the sway isn't as bad on the red lasers and the green lasers as the infrared laser so i highly recommend you use this in situations where you should use the infrared lasers is in close range let's say there's a guy up here like so we're going to wide through it and pre fire him this is going to save us some time on the uh the ads and it can also help out if this guy decides to move if this guy decides to move into our scope uh and gets like on the very corner of the hollow we're going to lose vision and it's going to make it a lot harder to hit those headies so i highly recommend when you come out corners close range use hip fire uh, it's super super advantageous in pvp and i highly highly recommend you use that now moving on to pvp tips and tricks so first of all let's say you're in a situation okay we've got a guy in this bathroom he's camping back here he's messed you up you're super hurt you need to heal as you can see my legs are damaged and you're out here holding the angle uh, he knows that you're hurt and he's going to push out if you don't hold the angle right so what can you do you can fall back right get a better position he's obviously going to chase you down if he knows you're hurt you can do this so this is what you can do right so he knows you're hurt you need to heal up but you don't want to give away that you're healing so what you can do is you can press Get the heal button you got a rat and, here, damn and it. stop spamming ah, voice damn lines traitor. like so. You got a rat here, damn it. And, and this will make ah, it damn so the you guy that you were fighting won't actually be able to heal ah, your healing traitor. animation. The voice uh, speaking is so loud that it will cancel out the animation of the noise uh, when you're healing, which can be a huge PvP advantage in a lot of situations. And this also applies for reloading magazines, etc, etc. Um, another thing to note as well, you can actually, actually animation cancel by doing this and then putting the magazine back in so you don't have to go through the animation of like reloading and making the sound. If you want to check your fire mode without giving away your position, as you can hear, it makes sound when I change, right? People can also hear the sound. What you can do is you can press L. In the inspect animation, it won't make any sound if you change in the fire rate or the fire mode, as you can see. Which is a very, very useful tip, which I highly recommend you use. Okay, now, another thing. Grenades. Um, grenades are very broken in this game. And in this video, it will definitely expose how broken they are. As not many people explain how they work. So, let's put ourselves in a situation real quick. Uh, we know there's a guy inside red. He's holding the, he's holding the angle back here like that. What we're going to do is we're going to throw a grenade to get him to move. Like so. Then throw a nade again. 
The explosion of that nade is going to mask, is going to mask the sound of that grenade hitting the floor. So the player that's back here obviously sees the first grenade, pulls back, and he's not going to hear the, the the second grenade drop. He's only going to see it because of the sound of the first grenade. If PVPers do this, it's it, 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 it's a cheesy tactic, and I wish it wasn't a thing. But unfortunately, the way the game works, it is a thing, and it probably will never get changed. Now, there is another thing you can take advantage of with this as well. So let's say we throw a grenade. We're going to wait for the sound cue, and I'll explain what happens, okay? So throw the nade. It's going to explode. Now, while we're sprinting, in those few seconds that we're sprinting and that nade explosion went off, our footsteps are going to make no noise at all. Which is another reason why when you're fighting people, they run in like this and you don't hear their footsteps. It's because they're using grenades audio to mask their footsteps, which I guess is kind of a feature. But in my opinion, I think it's a bug and I don't think it's intended properly to be to work like that. But you can also use free fires like so to mask your footsteps as well, which is huge, you know. Uh, if you're pre-firing and shooting, the person that's inside is not going to be able to hear your footsteps, which is going to make it harder for him to read. Now, he is going to hear the shots, but if you're, if you've got a friend cover firing behind you and he's just shooting a wall, he's not going to hear the footsteps. So it's an opportunity for you to push in and kill and catch the person off guard. So a little trick for you here that I want to add into the video. So if you take off your gun and you have nothing here like melee, pistol, and just main weaponry, um, you can actually heal up faster than you would be able to with the gun in your hand. Um, and I'll give you an example of how that works. And I'll also show you how to animation cancel. And this applies with all meds like Grizzlies and Saluas and IFACs and stuff like that. So, what you want to pay attention to is the bottom right of the screen. As you can see, the healing comes up straight away. As soon as you see that healing, all you want to do is press left click. If you press left click, it will cancel the animation, but also apply the heal. So as soon as you see the heal come up at the bottom, press left click, it'll cancel it. You've got the heal in and you save the extra two seconds of the animation that would uh, continue if you just left it there. That is how the animation cancel. Now, like I said, if you take off a gun and put it in your backpack, you can actually heal up your limbs faster if they're all damaged because um, there's no gun to pull back out of the holster and uh, do the animation. So that is also a little tip and trick if you want to save some time in PvP situations. I take full advantage of this when I fight players too. So now moving on to the ammo segment of the PvP guide, uh, I'm going to try and make this as quick as possible, so I'm not going to include trader prices and stuff like that. I'm just going to give you approximations of the prices based on the current flea market. Um, we are on patch 12.11, so these are the rounds that I recommend. I will be leaving rounds out, as you can see, but this, this is just purely my opinion on the rounds that I think you should use. So, two choices. Uh, MIAP was added in last wipe. It's found in raid only. You can pick it up for 1500 to 2000 rubles around. Comes with 58 penetration. Very, very good against Altins and TS6 armor. The choice is yours. I, I recommend it, but I wouldn't fill all your magazines with this ammo. I'd bring like one magazine extra just in case. Uh, now moving on to BP, which is the most common round of this wipe. Super strong. 58 uh, flesh damage, 47 penetration. It's everywhere. It's around 1000 rubles a shot. I highly recommend you run this round if you're going to run an AK-103 or Mutant. Definitely one of the most reliable rounds in the game. Now moving on to 556, uh, 995 or 55A1. 995 is basically for meta gear players on labs like Altins, Slicks, Zucks, Gen, uh, Gen 4, stuff like that. Uh, you can use 995. Personally, I don't use it because it doesn't want tap Raiders. I highly recommend you run 55A1. Uh, but if you have got some 995 from Mishala, then go right ahead. Uh, bearing in mind, if the person isn't like super geared, they're going to take a lot longer to kill because it's a lower flesh damage round. But both are a good choice. But personally, I recommend you go with a 55A1. You can put 55A1 up for around 1500 around and 995 for around 1800 around. But that is the 556 variant. Moving on now to Val, BP, SPP, and SP6. Now, in my opinion, I think SP6 is good enough. Uh, I run it all the time. Comes with a recoil reduction modifier, which is really, really nice. So basically, the Val has no recoil at all. If you have the higher skills, I recommend SP6. You can get it for around 600 rubles around. Very, very good. And it two taps tier five consistently. Now you can run SPP, which comes with higher flesh damage and higher pen, but it also comes with more recoil, which I'm not a fan of. The choice is yours. And as you can see, we've got BP as well, which is just overkill with penetration, but you can also run this. Uh, but in my opinion, I would just go for SP6 if you want to keep it cheaper. But the choice is there. BP and SPP is definitely very good rounds. Uh, now moving on to M61. Uh, and 993 and M62. So, I'm not going to include 993 because this is more of a sniper round. I highly recommend you don't use this as this does come with a um, recoil modifier that makes the recoil worse uh, and the, the ammo is around 3k bullets sometimes. 
as it's fern and raid only uh, you can use it, but I don't recommend it. I would just go straight for M61 if you're looking for penetration. Uh, two tap slicks, very, very strong. Um, obviously, it does come with a recoil modifier as well, which makes it a little bit hard to handle with the MDR. Uh, currently, I'm using M62 if I'm playing labs. Um, great round. Obviously, it doesn't have the penetration. It lacks if you run into like a tier 5 or tier 6 player. But then again, you know, you can just headshot them. Very, very good. If you can buy M61, I highly recommend it if you're going for PvP. Now, if you're going to go farm Raiders and just play on other maps, then I highly recommend M62. But just bear in mind, M61 is going to be what takes what takes down the big boys. So just make sure you've got at least a magazine with you if you're going to run M62 and M61. Definitely worth it. M80, you can run it if you're on a super budget. Uh, it, you know, it comes with high flesh damage and decent penetration. But the choice is yours. If I were you, I'd just go straight for M62. You can beat M62 for around 1,000 rubles a shot, which is pretty good. And M61 is around 2.5k to 3k a shot at the moment. All right, so that is the ammo. Oh, also, sorry, M80, you can pick up for around like 300 rubles, which is super, super cheap. But yeah, that's pretty much uh, the 7.62 ammo. Now moving on to 5.45. This ammo gets uh, a lot of flack for being bad. No, I, I don't think that it's bad at all. Uh, I think it's pretty good. 7 and 3, 9, 37 flesh damage, 62 penetration. I highly recommend you run this round. Very, very good. Or you can go with BS. Now, if you're on a budget, you can go with BT, as BT is very, very cheap. You can pick it up for 300 rubles a shot. BS for 1k a shot and a Golnik for 1k a shot. Um, if you're going to use 5 for 5, the choice is yours, really. I personally would go for BS just for the extra flesh damage, as it already comes with great penetration. But if you want that overkill, then you can run a Golnik. Uh, now, moving on to MP7 ammo. APSX is obviously the best, but it has low flesh damage. And it's not fen it's only Fen Raid now, so it's really hard to get your hands on. Uh, and it comes up as a cost of like 1700 a bullet, which is super expensive. Personally, I've been running Subsonic because it reduces recoil by 22 on the MP7, which is really nice for headshotting people. Um, as you can see, it's only got 36 penetration, but it has 45 damage. So that means you can one tap Raiders in the head, which is really, really nice. You can run FMJ if you want a little bit of a, you know, an umph to the, the gun, but it's entirely up to you. Personally, uh, I would either go for Subsonic or APSX. As, like I said, Subsonic gives a massive recoil reduction, which is super, super nice. Or just go all out and go APSX. It won't let you down when it comes to geared players. It will absolutely destroy them. But that is it for the ammo segment. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I, like I said, I just wanted to keep it brief as possible. Um, I will be leaving rounds out, like I said, as well. But these are just the meta rounds in the game right now that I highly recommend that you use. Okay, so moving on to the meds and painkillers guy real quick. I'm going to give you a quick breakdown of these. So personally, I run the Grizzly. Why do I run the Grizzly? Grizzly comes with a built-in splint uh, action. So basically, if you have a broken leg, it will repair the, the leg just by healing it up. No problem at all. It is a little bit longer than using an actual splint, but it's an all-in-one uh, quality of life healing med kit, which is really, really nice. As you can see here, it says the heal time is five seconds. But if you didn't know, you can actually animation cancel. And I will leave an example. Uh, it stops light bleed, stops heavy bleeds, very nice. And as you can see, it stops contusion as well, which is also very, very nice. Uh, it comes with 1800 durability, which is great for long fights. You can use this multiple raids in a row. Uh, very good med kit. This is my personal go-to. Now, you're going to say, well, Tix, it does heal heavy bleeds, but it takes a long time. That's where you bring a hemostat with you to save yourself some time. You can also run this in your container if you just want to make things a little bit easier for the next run if you do die. Personally, I just keep it there. But uh, that is the choice on the Grizzlies. I recommend you use Grizzly and a hemostat. The choice is yours. Now, moving on to Salua. Um, you can use Salua's. They do heal really fast as well. As you can see, three second use time. You can animation cancel them too to make it a little bit faster. Like I said, I will leave an example of how to animation cancel in this video. Um, problem is with the Salua, it takes up a lot of HP when healing heavy bleeds if you forget to use your hemostat. But overall, pretty good med. It's a good alternative to the Grizzly. But in my opinion, I recommend going Grizzly. If you don't want to go Grizzly and you want to save some rubles, then go Salua. Uh, now moving on to... Stimulants. Uh, we have got the ETG stim here. This stim is the one of the best stims in the game, if not the best. If you're in a fight, you get down to 100 HP, you're really injured and you need to heal up fast or you're going to die. You pop this thing in two seconds and your HP will start ticking so fast. Super useful in fights. And you can also use this as a pre-med too. So if you think you're going to get into a crazy fight and have a good chance of dying, right? Big, big firefight, 1v5. Pop this bad boy, run in there and there's a good chance it could keep you alive with the, the extra ticks from the healing. Very, very good. I highly recommend you put this in your container down here like that. Now you can bring a propotol if you've, let's say you've, you know, you've run around a radar, shot you up a little bit. He's took off some of your HP. You forgot to heal. You can prop a propotol, acts as a painkiller for a decent amount of time. And it also regenerates HP slowly, similar to the ETD stim. 
Very, very good. You can pick it up for around 20k. Right now, ETG is around like 70k. Uh, adrenaline. Now, not many people use adrenaline. I recommend you hotkey this inside your toolbar right here. Um, this is great for removing recoil on guns. It gives you plus 10 uh, on the recoil control skill, which actually helps out a little bit, which is really, really nice. Obviously, it acts as a painkiller too for 60 seconds, which can help out in certain situations as an emergency. You can pick this up for like 15k, 10k. It's situational, but you can bring it if you want that extra chance of survival in raids that's decent for uh the recoil control as you can see right here um, and it also does slowly heal as well which is nice now another thing that's slept on is augustin not many people use as augustin uh this thing is great gives you 180 seconds of um bleeding immunity basically so if you bleed uh or get shot it'll instantly just heal up the bleeds for you which is great in pvp you know bleeds bleeds definitely slow down the pvp a lot and this stimulant is definitely worth having now moving on to painkillers you've got two choices you've got the ibuprofen which is a good painkiller has 15 uses lasts for 280 seconds takes around five seconds to use as you can see definitely a good painkiller one of the better alternatives right now but the problem is with the ibuprofen i don't like that it takes away hydration you can just bring a bottle of water with you in a raid if you've you know you've popped a bunch of painkillers that choice is up to you you can also do this barter trade right here with therapist blood set for 8k three meds for 10k each it's around 40k for this painkiller pretty good uh you can use that in my opinion if you can get your hands on them golden stars just way better man it only takes off energy and it lasts for way longer as you can see 350 seconds obviously there is less uses but this this uh painkiller also has a bonus of giving you food as well just in case you're in an emergency you're zero food you're gonna die to you know a blacked head and that that zero food can actually take some damage off you the golden star can save you in those emergencies so i highly recommend using golden star it's my go-to and it is the best in slot so you can run a splint in your container which a lot of people do if they're running the salua strategy uh this choice is completely up to you preferably i like to keep my slots free and i like to use the grizzly but that is the med stims and painkillers rundown okay, now moving on to armor and what i recommend you run uh for your meta armor kits now we have three choices here we have tier 6 tier 5 and tier 4 i'm going to quickly give you a brief of what i uh what my opinions are on these armors and the current state of the game and through the, the wipes that i've played and what i recommend so first of all we have the slick tier 6 comes with a one percent ergo penalty uh 10 percent movement speed penalty which is pretty significant but for the most part slick's one of the best armors in the game it comes around 300 000 rubles brand new very expensive but very very good against a lot of rounds um i highly recommend you use the slick now as a cheaper alternative you can run the hex grid this was added in last wipe uh it has got slightly better stats but it only comes with 50 durability so that means when you're in fights you have less durability to take more fights of other players if your armor's already melted but like i said hex armor very very good it's basically a mini slick i highly recommend you use it you can pick this up for around 250k to 300k um now we got the zuck zuck is a very good armor Problem is the repair quality is really bad. Um, you can only really get like two runs out of this. If you say that you go in a raid, it gets destroyed. You repair it. You can do it. You can do it like one or two more times. But other than that, you're gonna have to replace it straight after. But there is another thing to the Zook that's why it's really good. It comes with stomach protection, which is great against shotguns, especially if you're playing maps like Factory. So I highly recommend you use the Zook as it is a tier six, and it do does come with some decent stats as well. And you can pick this up for like 230k, 240k brand new, which is really really good. Now you have the tequila armor, which is added in this wipe. Tequila's armor, tier 6, as you can see, thorax only protection, same as the slick and the hex grid, uh, which is nice in certain situations. It's definitely a PvP armor. This armor you're only, only going to be using if you're going to be running at players. Very, very strong. Uh, repairs decently. Um, obviously, the slots is the issue. You know, it doesn't have many slots, so you can't really run a grizzly in here, but it's definitely a good PvP armor if that's your thing and you just want to run at players. Highly recommend it if that is your goal. Um, now, moving on to tier 5 armor, I'm going to quickly give you uh, my opinion on tier 5 armor in this game. Now, I personally think tier 5 armor is useless if you're playing maps like Labs and Interchange, purely based off the fact that people that are playing those maps are using BP, SP6, um, and all these high tier rounds like M61, M62. And uh, most of the time, tier 5 gets 2 tapped by those rounds, uh, same as tier 4. And you can save that extra 100k that would you, that you would usually spend buying a tier 5 and just buying two tier 4s instead. So the choice is yours, but the tier 5s are definitely good in certain situations, like maps like customs and stuff. But like I said, for interchange and labs, tier 5, in my opinion, is not really worth it. But you can still use it if you want to. Now, we've got the killer armor, one of the better, better armors in the game um, for price and performance. Repairs very well. Good material. 
very good stats also protects the stomach which is really really nice against shotguns you can pick this up for around 200k to swipe which is pretty solid now we're moving on to the osprey which is a new rig that was added in the swipe tier 5 uh it does come with you know some heavy uh stat nerfs but overall it's pretty good because it does come with a lot of slots which is nice uh you got all these slots which is great which is helps helps out with money uh, unfortunately the repair quality isn't too great but it's definitely a choice you can pick this up for around like 110k which is pretty solid 120k uh, it depends on the market though as this is a supply and demand item based off labs um, but it's definitely a solid choice same as the defender now moving on to the vendor this can spawn on uh, uh, sanitas guards and can it used to be able to spawn in lab sorry but it doesn't anymore but it can spawn in their backpacks and stuff this armor actually used to be pretty solid it's similar to the killer armor it does come with extra durability which is really nice as you can see the stats aren't too bad either and it also covers the stomach which is very very nice and it repairs well too so this is another choice you can pick this up for around 180k to 200k uh if you're going to run tier 5 now moving on to tier 4 which i think is the most efficient armor in the game overall uh we've got the new one that just got it added in this is the osprey tier 4 aluminium which repairs decently as you can see the stats covers right arm left arm which will help you with flinch whenever you get shot, which is really nice. Obviously, it's only a tier 4, so BP is still going to 2-tap it, just like the killer armor. But it's definitely a good choice if you're going to, you know, PvP on a budget. As you can see, there's the slots, very, very good. Now, we have the most reliable armor in the game, which I think is the TV-110. You can pick this up for around 100k in the flea market. Great slot efficiency, uh, as you can see. Stats are amazing, too. Very, very nice. And it repairs decently, too, and has good slots. And then we have the Trooper, which is also a very reliable armor, which I recommend you use if you're going to play labs like, maps like Labs and Interchange. Uh, level 4, here's the stats, pretty solid, repairs well. Um, and that's it for the armor, guys. These are the armors that I recommend. Obviously, I don't want to go full in detail with them. I just wanted to keep this guide brief as possible. These would be the armors I would use if I was going to play uh, Labs and Interchange based on, you know, things that have happened to me throughout the day. But the, overall, these are the most reliable armors in the game. And moving on to helmets, I'm going to give you a, a quick brief on helmets in this game and what I think is the best and what I recommend for you to run. So... You have two choices here now. Uh, you've got the Alton and you've got the Reese. Both of these helmets are pretty much the same. They come with extra durability. I have made a video on this before explaining them. But as you can see, here's the stat difference. Uh, if you can buy a trade for the Reese, go right ahead and start stocking up on those. Definitely a good choice. Like I said, it's slightly better than the Alton, but there's not too much of a difference. But if you have got Max Shredders, start stocking up on them. Very, very solid, as it has uh, better stats than the Alton. Uh, very cheap also. And then you also have the Alton over here, which is basically the same as the Reese. They both do the same thing. Tier 5, they protect the same areas, and uh, they come at a decent price. Now, you have a 50-50 chance to block a BP bullet on an Alton, which is pretty good, I'd say, if you're playing Labs and Interchange. So if someone's got that, you know, line of sight on you with a Mutant and they hit you in the head, there is a 50% chance that you could live. So I definitely recommend this. And it's also great against 556 if you're playing labs and stuff and you run into those players. And it can also block M62s and M80s really, really well too. So those are your two choices with the Altons. I highly recommend either of these uh, if you want to, you know, go for the full protection method. Um, so definitely try those out. Now you can go for the Tequila, which is basically a better Alton. Uh, the only drawback is you don't have um, back of head protection. But if you're PvPing correctly, you shouldn't need back of head protection. Uh, as you can see, it comes with high ricochet chance. Tier 5 repairs extremely well. Very good stats. And also a little secret with this helmet. It doesn't actually have uh, bullet holes on them when they get shot in the face. Which is really nice if you survive. Unlike the Alton. Um, and also, if you wear a cap or a fleece uh, with this, it can also increase your sound in raid, which is super, super huge. I highly recommend this armor if you're running strictly for PvP and Reese for like PvP and PvE to help against raiders and stuff. Now, if you want to get down to a little bit of a budget uh, route, I like running the U-Latch Tan or you can run the, the normal U-Latch. Very cheap, tier 4, high ricochet chance, very, very nice. I highly recommend this if you're trying to keep things cheap. Saves you a couple of times. It's basically just an RNG helmet. Uh, you're just relying on ricochet chance basically to save you. Or if a Keterator shoots you in the side of the head or top of the head. Not a bad choice. You can pick it up for around 60k rubles. To gear a mask, you can pick it up for around like 100k, 120. Um, now this, you're going to be like, wait, Tix, this is a level 1 helmet. Yes, but as you can see, high ricochet chance. You get it for 10,000 rubles. What you want to do is whack on a slap plate, which is a tier 5. Basically the same as an Alton. And it will protect the front of your head right there with a tier 5. Now, I actually use this armor a lot in previous wipes. It saved me a decent bit. Um, 
the, the slap plate, as you can see, it rem removes 15% ergo, which is pretty hefty. So only run this with guns that have super high ergo, so you don't feel that uh, nerf. But definitely a good choice. You can pick this up around like 60k rubles, 70k rubles as well. Very, very solid. If you want to have, obviously, a headset with you as well, because you can run these with headsets, which is pretty good. But for the most part, these are my helmet recommendations. I am leaving other helmets out, as I don't really use them. Uh, I know some of them are good, but I won't include them in this guide.